Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today I want to talk to you about this Pro controller for the PS5, the Victrix Pro BFG and how it compares to the others. It's got adjustable trigger stops, four mappable rear buttons, swappable thumbsticks and this clever modular design that lets you change the entire layout of the controller, including this fight pad module. It's also one of the cheapest Pro controllers out there when compared to the DualSense Edge, Scuff Reflex and Razer controllers. But how does it compare on features, design and quality and is it really worth buying? So the first thing to note that this is an officially licensed controller, so it comes with all of the PS5 branding that you would expect to see, and this immediately makes this feel like a proper controller. Inside the box we have a hard shell carry case, and that's got the Victrix logo on the top. And if we open this up we can see we get the controller and all of the accessories inside, and this includes a six button fight pad module for playing games like Tekken or Street Fighter, a spare set of thumbstick gates, a USB dongle which you will need to use on the PlayStation 5 when playing wirelessly. There's also two extra D-pad buttons, a spare set of analog sticks with different heights, a mini screwdriver tool, and a 2.9 meter braided USB-C charging cable, which I really like the color of. And this can also be used for playing it in wired mode if you'd rather not use it wirelessly. And that is everything that we get inside the box. Okay, so looking at the design on this, this is not like any other PlayStation 5 controller that we've seen. In fact, I would say this looked more like an Xbox controller. It's given me Elite Series 2 vibes, which isn't a bad thing. Even the triangular grips on the front have a Series 2 look to it. I'm liking the colour theme as well. It's pretty much black all over with a hint of purple, which other than black and grey, purple is actually my favourite colour, so this looks nice. And holding it now, this feels ergonomic and I can easily reach all of the buttons. I was concerned it would feel too big, but once I swapped out the thumbsticks from the Xbox to the PlayStation layout, it felt perfect. But it's also very light, like a lot lighter than I was expecting. In fact, I would say it's maybe even too light, which makes this feel like a cheap plastic controller. It's probably not helped by the fact that there's no vibration module or speakers or microphone built into this controller, so that will naturally reduce the weight. The plastic case has a hard, brittle plastic feel rather than premium. First impressions on quality, it's nowhere near as premium feeling as say an Edge or an Elite controller, which feel far more weighty, but it's still packing some seriously good features over the others. The Victrix logo at the top also lights up once it's powered on or charging, and this also doubles up as a button. It works in the same way as a normal PS5 controller, but this isn't a touchpad. To the left and right of that are the usual share and menu buttons that you would expect, and under that is a function button. You can use this to program your buttons, which I will show you later. There's also a tiny LED inside which comes on depending on what you're doing. Other standard buttons on the front include the triangle, circle, X and square, and as this is an officially licensed controller, it's great to see that we get the actual icons rather than a blanked out plate. The D-pad comes pre-installed with this layout, but this can be swapped out and moved around. Then there's the PlayStation button in the middle which kind of works as you would expect. However, I couldn't get it to turn on my PlayStation 5 once it was in standby, so I found I had to turn the console on first and then the controller. Now like with most Pro Controllers, we do have the option to adjust the triggers. This means depending on what game you're playing, you can swap between instant or normal trigger responses. The triggers feel nice in terms of their positioning and size, but they do feel quite loose and have that cheap plastic feel. However, they do have five stop positions between normal and instant, or as they call it, their clutch mode. Each trigger can be independently changed by flicking this button on the rear, and it'll go from normal triggers to instant. This is useful when playing FPS games like Call of Duty or Apex Legends, where you need that fast response when aiming or firing, and they are instant. Being able to fire as fast as a mouse click is crazy. But swapping back to normal mode is a little fiddly, unlike the Edge controller where there's a lever-like button that lets you choose between the different modes. On this, you need to press the rear button in and pull the trigger down. The advantage of this is you can manually set the distance of where you want it to stop, but it's not a quick process like the others. Now when you jump onto games like GT7 for example, where you don't need or want that instant trigger, you get the full range from the triggers, rather than being locked into one mode. And that's one problem with scuff controllers, because once you've chosen the instant trigger during checkouts, you're not able to change this on the controller. But one strange thing I found when I was in clutch mode on the triggers is they are crazy sensitive. This is both good and bad, as I found if I gently rested my finger against the trigger it would still fire, sometimes without me even realising it. The same happens with aiming down sight, but adjusting it slightly lower than instant worked absolutely fine for me. Around the back we don't just have two, but we get four mappable rear buttons. These aren't removable like we see on the edge and scuff controllers, these are permanently attached. Positioning feels great though, and I would go as far to say these are the best positioning that I've ever felt on a controller. Now the purpose of these buttons are to allow you to remap any button on the controller to the rear, 
So for me, while playing games like Call of Duty, I'll always map the X or jump button to the rear paddles. It means while I'm running around, I don't need to move my finger from the thumbstick to press X. I can just press one of the rear buttons instead. And mapping them is really easy. All you need to do is press and hold the profile button, which is found on the back of the controller, and press the rear button that you wish to map. The LED will now start to flash, and you simply press the other button on the controller that you wish to copy. And that's it. You can also disable any button by pressing and holding the profile button first, then double tapping the button you wish to clear. Talking about profiles, there are three inbuilt profiles on this controller, and you can tab through those by pressing the button on the rear. It'll go from purple to blue and then green. This means you can have different buttons mapped depending on the profile that you're using, like Call of Duty for purple, GT7 for blue, and Spider-Man for green. So the single feature that sets this controller apart from all of the others is the modular design. By default, it comes with the asymmetrical thumbstick layout. So we have the thumbs and the D-pad in a similar layout to an Xbox controller. But with this little screwdriver tool, we're able to remove these two screws and completely remove the module. From here, you can either flip it around and reinsert it, giving us the option to use it like a PlayStation controller with the symmetrical sticks. Or you could remove the module entirely and replace it with the fight pad. This now means for those games where you'd rather use a fight pad and a joystick, well, you can. I tested this out with a few games including Tekken and Street Fighter, and it works really well. You can either use it with the D-pad buttons, which is what I prefer, or you could replace the analog stick with the larger one, and you would then be able to use it like an old school fight pad. And the buttons on this module are crazy responsive, they're almost like a mouse click rather than a typical button. But the fact you can swap the modules out and rearrange them how you need them is awesome. Essentially, you've got an Xbox, a PlayStation, and fight pad controller all in one. Although this does only work on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC, it doesn't actually work on the Xbox. So as mentioned, you can swap the thumbsticks around, but you can also change the caps on them. All you need to do is pull the tops and they will pop off. Then you can install either of the spare sets instead. So if you prefer the domed caps instead, we well can use one of those. These feel nice and the positioning is great, but the fact that you can swap them out is a game changer. So this controller can be used both wirelessly and wired. You tend to find the cheaper controllers stick to a wired only mode, so it's great to see that this one offers both. Around the back, there's a physical button that you do need to flick between the different modes. And if you're using it wired, it's a case of plugging the USB-C cable into the controller and the other end into the console. You can also use this cable to charge it, and it does show up on the PlayStation 5 menu. So it takes the guessing out of what your battery status is, as you can see it here. Now, if you do decide to use it wirelessly, you will unfortunately need to use the provided USB dongle. I was surprised by this, as most other controllers, including SCUF, don't need to use a dongle. But that's because this one does use the 2.4 GHz rather than Bluetooth. So you're getting a lag-free experience, but it's still a shame. Now, I do also own a few SCUF controllers, as well as the Edge controller. So how do they all compare? Well, there's a lot to cover, but in summary, the SCUF controller is better if you just want those instant triggers. Plus, it has the four rear mappable buttons, profiles, and works without a dongle. But these are more expensive, and the build quality is similar, whereas the Edge controller feels far more premium than the others. I also prefer the design and the adjustable triggers. Plus, you can use the on-screen profiles to adjust and tweak the controller as you need it. The stick modules can be removed and swapped out, but it only has two rear buttons as opposed to four. It's also about 20 to 30 pounds more expensive, but you are getting the full vibration, adaptive triggers, speaker, and microphones built in, something that the Victrix does not come with. So with all of that said, is it worth buying the Victrix Pro controller for the PlayStation 5? Well, I bought this to see how it compared to the others, and whether it would replace the ones I already had. And the short answer is the others are better, but they are also more expensive. Value for money, this controller is good, and if you need that modular design and the fight pad layout, it is a no-brainer. You're getting a lot of controller for the money, but it is let down by the overall feel and quality. However, if you don't need the fight pad, I would spend the extra and go for the Edge controller instead. It is far more premium feeling. And if you only need a controller for games like Call of Duty and you want those instant triggers, I would go for the Scuff. That's what I use and this controller is rapid. Now let me know what controller you're using and if you would pick up any of these Pro controllers. And drop a PS5 Pro controller in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out the DualSense Edge video next, as it covers the full unboxing and review. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, sub, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.